the packet size that we can use on our Wi-Fi is Ethernet sized, uh, IEEE 802.3, and that is 1500 octets. And you know, I knew one of the people whose name was on the Ethernet patent, and he was my mentor at a mini computer company back in the late 80s. His name was David Boggs. And I had an opportunity to listen to him talk about the old days, and talk about being at Xerox and inventing Ethernet and or being on the team that invented it. And so I'm in a position to know secondhand that the intent was that the packet size would continue to grow so that as we got faster networking, we would also get large packets. He was a genius in a lot of ways, and I miss him uh, every day. But um, his idea about this was every time the clock rate gives you 10x, in other words, you go from 10 megabit to 100 to 1,000 you know, to, to gigabit, or I guess to gigabit to 10 gig and so forth. Every time you get 10x of clock, you should probably give about a third of that to packet size. Uh, so that the number of packets in a given unit time doesn't also go 10x, right? Mm -hmm. Like your your packet count and your packet size to each go about a square root of 10 or around three. And had we been doing that all this time, a lot of things would be simple that are currently very hard. Uh, we certainly wouldn't care that fragmentation didn't work if the packets we could send had gotten larger over time. But they didn't, and the reason they didn't is that the Ethernet market relies on sort of uh, backward compatibility. When somebody adds 10 gigabit networking to their office network, uh, they don't make everybody switch at once. They just say new ports will be 10 gig, but the old ones will still be one gig, and we're going to run a network bridge, a layer two bridge, to connect the old one to the new one. And that won't work if the packet sizes on the new one are so big, they can't be bridged backward to the one that made the market exist in the, in the first place. So Ethernet is effectively trapped at 1500 octets for all time to come.